That sounds so great, but I have a little more studying to do. Can you believe this nerd? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments with the girls on The Big Bang Theory. Oh, just a video of Bernadette in a beauty pageant? What? <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at the best moments when the ladies were doing it for themselves. After all, Penny, Bernadette and Amy don't need the guys to have a good time. Which Big Bang Girls moment tops your list? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Talking Superheroes While this one features Raj's girlfriend Emily instead of Amy, it's too good not to include. Hey, so I saw a movie trailer the other day. How could Batman possibly fight Superman? I mean, isn't that dumb? Maybe he uses kryptonite. Well, Batman's got a lot of money. Maybe he builds a suit that can do everything Superman can do. One of the recurring motifs of the Big Bang Theory is how much the guys really love superheroes and how much the girls in their lives do not. This explains the hysterically shocked looks on the faces of Howard, Leonard and Raj when, for one fleeting moment, their significant others get into a discussion about Batman fighting Superman. What is happening? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But it's beautiful. However, the conversation soon jumps from Ben Affleck as Batman to Ben Affleck in Shakespeare in Love. And just like that, the beautiful moment of girlfriend geekiness is gone. Yeah, and now Ben Affleck is Batman? Oh, he was great in Shakespeare in Love. We should watch that next girls' night. We could do a double feature with the Leonardo DiCaprio, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I love me some Leo. And it's gone. Number nine, dating an astronaut. Whether or not you liked the storyline that had Leonard dating Raj's sister Priya, you have to admit it did lead to some very funny episodes. Okay, Amy, you're being silly. I am not concerned about who hangs out with who. I certainly don't have a problem with Leonard's new girlfriend who wears way too much makeup. That includes season four's The Wildebeest Implementation, which sees Bernadette as a reluctant double agent at a dinner party with the happy couple, reporting back to Penny and Amy. By accepting the invitation, Bernadette becomes a double agent inside the enemy camp. She could ferret out Priya's tactics, identify her weaknesses, and feed her false information, such as Leonard's no stranger to back alley cockfights. Looking to intimidate Priya, they have Bernadette lie, saying Penny is going to be in a 3D movie with Angelina Jolie. But the highlight of the sequence is when an autocorrect oopsie has her apparently dating an astronaut, too. What astronaut story? You texted me Penny's dating an astronaut. I texted architect. That's amusing. Autocorrect must have changed it. <laughs> Eventually, all the subterfuge is too much for sweet Bernadette to shoulder, but we sure enjoyed it. How did Penny meet an astronaut? I don't know. The regular way people meet astronauts. <laughs> Most of those guys live in Texas. Obviously, this one doesn't. Number eight, Penny's bachelorette party. While the guys are heading off to Mexico to give Leonard a belated bachelor party, Amy and Bernadette throw Penny a mini bachelorette party back at the apartment. It really didn't have to... Whoa! <laughs> that is anatomic. Thank you. The veins are gummy worms. Amy gets the festivities started when she shows up with some very anatomical cookies. And the girls' fun just keeps on rolling from there. From at-home ear piercing to phone calls to parents, Penny, for instance, tells her dad she eloped. And as it turns out, her dad has something to tell her as well. It is a beautiful piece of machinery. Anyway, uh, I backed over your pet pig with it. <laughs> Moon dance? Yeah, he's uh, not dancing anymore. <laughs> when Amy refuses to hold up her end and tell her mom she and Sheldon split, Penny gets a little retribution. Amy broke up with Sheldon, she got her ears pierced, and she made us eat penis cookies. <laughs> Hang on, she wants to talk to you. Number seven, afternoon tea. In an effort to feel more like grown-ups, the girls decide, after Penny shoots down the idea of a museum, to do afternoon tea at a local hotel. Oh, well, while they're acting like teenagers, we could do something grown-up. Oh, you mean like a museum? Yes, like a museum, but anything else. While it does sound like a fancy and very grown-up thing to do, when they get there, they discover that the clientele is mostly of the mother-daughter variety. There sure are a lot of little kids here. I can't believe we thought this would make us feel grown-up. 
can't believe the waiter thought I was your daughter. Although the waiter thinking that Penny was Bernadette's mum would imply some perceived adulthood, the implication doesn't improve the girl's feelings. The last time I got dressed up and had tea was when I was five. Just me, my teddy bear, Raggedy Ann, and my hamster. That's cute. <laughs> it was. Till my hamster ate all her babies. Next up, the bar in the lobby, which is decidedly a grown-up location. Should we leave? Well, there's a bar in the lobby. I could go for a drink. Oh, drinking in the afternoon, just like her mommy. Number six, Amy's bachelorette party. For Amy's bachelorette party, Penny and Bernadette throw a quilting bee rather than the usual prenuptial debauchery. Isn't it perfect? You know, instead of oiled up strippers and sex toys, we thought, what does Amy like? <laughs> Amy likes a quilting bee. <laughs> to be honest, the Amy we met in season three would probably have loved a quilting themed send off. However, by season 11, not only is she super duper excited about getting married, something she never thought she'd do, but she also desires a bachelorette party filled with bad decisions. But this is my bachelorette party. It's supposed to be fun and wild and full of bad decisions. Hey, we can make bad decisions. Yeah, she had two kids back to back and I thought you'd like this, so we're off to a good start. So they go to a bar and 12 minutes and a minimal amount of drinks later. Cheers. <laughs> Should we get her home? Why? She's sound asleep and we have sliders coming. But being the good friends they are, Penny and Bernadette embellish the story when Amy asks what happened. I did that? Yeah, you did. Mm. <laughs> but I don't know how to river dance. <laughs> Didn't stop you from teaching all those shirtless firemen. Number five, girls' night. With Amy having just joined the group in the final episode of season three, the season four sleepover is the first storyline that brings all the girls together, separate from the boys. Amy, don't you agree we should leave now and get in line? Actually, as the newest member of your social group, I believe I'll gain more acceptance by arbitrarily siding with your friends from time to time. Amy was originally planning on going to the movies with Sheldon and the guys, but when she finds out that Penny and Bernadette are having a girls' night, she more or less invites herself over. I'm a girl. <laughs> oh, well, maybe you can join us. I'll ask Penny. No need. Penny and I are very close. You are? Yes. In fact, our menses are synchronized. In typical fashion, the night is full of prank phone calls, pillow fights, truth or dare, experimenting with lesbianism, and a spicy bit about the nether eye. Oh, hey, Amy. Look, I'm sorry I got so upset. I just... Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> What are you doing? Don't worry, I'll avoid the nether, yeah, yeah. Because who hasn't recited Chaucer at a slumber party? And Absalon hath kissed her nether, yeah, yeah, and Nicholas is scalded in the torta. This tale is done, and God save all the rota. Number four, Amy discovers Sheldon's plan. The most iconic moment of the season nine episode, the opening night excitation, is obviously Sheldon and Amy having coitus for the first time. Well, I enjoyed that more than I thought I would. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> While that moment doesn't involve any of the other girls, there are some great scenes prior to the big night that feature all three of them. Thanks for taking me out. Well, you're spending your birthday with Sheldon. Why not celebrate early? So where do you want to go? I heard that new Mexican place on Green Street is good. Yep. Sure, sure. Or we could take you to get a bikini wax. The best of the scenes is when Penny and Bernadette hint at, then outright tell Amy what Sheldon has planned for her birthday. What surprises? <sighs> We don't want to spoil anything, but you should know that Sheldon said he's ready to be physical. You shut your damn mouth! And to anyone who doesn't think this is one of the best girls moments ever, just watch how Amy reacts when she finds out what Sheldon has planned. I can't believe it. I, I don't know what to say. Well, we're really happy for you and we know how much he cares. I do know what to say. Let's get me waxed! <laughs> Number three, Vegas, baby. The girls had tried to go to Las Vegas once before, but Amy's elbowing of a TSA agent kind of ruined those plans. TSA agent got a little handsy. <laughs> I may have broken her nose with my elbow. Well, 
Long story short, she's on the no-fly list and we might have been followed here by a drone. However, a couple of years later, it appears that Amy has been taken off the no-fly list as the girls give it another shot. Wanna go to Vegas this weekend? Of course I do. <laughs> Where did that girls week in Vegas, you in? Hell yeah! Yes! <laughs> I'll check flights. I'll check hotels. I'll check my underpants. I'm so excited, I think I peed. And this time, not only do they get to Vegas, but Amy and Bernadette get super drunk while Penny has to stay in the room and do some last minute studying for work. I mean, look at you, your body's banging. <laughs> Don't Amy me, we're always talking about how hot Penny is. Come on, scientist is scientist. How big are those Hadron Colliders? When the inebriated PhD holders return, their alcohol-induced exuberance is very funny. They also have an important question about Australian male strippers that requires investigating. Hey, Penny, let's go. We found a place that has Australian male strippers. We want to see if they twirl their junk in the other direction. Number two, reading comic books. While the guys are on a road trip to the Bakersfield Comic Con, the girls get into a discussion about their partner's obsession with comic books and superheroes. Four of them work at a major university. They're all super smart. How can they still be into something made for 12-year-olds? I don't mind it. I think Howie's just in touch with his inner child. Although when he comes to bed in his Batman pajamas, sometimes it feels like I'm touching his inner child. <laughs> Having never read one before, they head to the comic book store to see what all the fuss is about. Well, there was a lot of action, mm. and the story moved along at a brisk pace. It was overall, what's the word I'm looking for? Stupid? So stupid. While they all initially find the medium rather stupid, it leads to a whole afternoon of arguing about Thor and his hammer, and who can and can't pick it up. Who decides who's worthy? Does the hammer decide? Yes. <laughs> It can't decide. It's a hammer. You said it's a magic hammer. Yeah, but it, it can't make decisions. If Harry Potter's wand can make decisions, why can't Thor's hammer? When the guys get back, the girls are still arguing, causing the same kind of shocked and confused reactions they had for our first entry. Maybe Thor's hammer is a new color of nail polish. <laughs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Disney princesses. We don't have a problem with Bernadette being Cinderella, do you? That's true. Every one of you has the capacity to be anything you want to be. Unless you want to be Cinderella. <laughs> Come at me, see what happens. Making a donation. Giving is better than receiving. Unless there are cute genes involved. Giving really is better than receiving. Oh, I used to think it was such a cliche, but seems to be the, oh, look at these cute jeans someone just threw away. Donated. Can of change. Amy and Bernadette's spat leads to Penny's broken nose. Because I'm the one who added toad. <laughs> you? Didn't see that one coming, did you? <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, you're not going to see this coming. <gasps> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Night of Secrets When the girls get together for a movie night, Amy and Bernadette want to watch Penny's gorilla-themed horror movie. Search for it. What? No, no, why? Because it'd be fun to watch. It would be humiliating. Well, now we have two reasons. <laughs> they have it. Please, can we watch it? Please. An embarrassed Penny relents, but gets back at Bernadette by finding a video of her at the Miss California Quiznos 1999 beauty pageant. I'm Bernadette Mary Ann Rostenkowski from Yorba Linda, California. <laughs> Then, in order to get the embarrassing spotlight off her, Bernadette announces that Amy writes Little House on the Prairie fan fiction. Oh my god, it's about her and Sheldon. <laughs> it's not about me and Sheldon. It's about a young woman in the 1800s named Amelia and the time-traveling physicist named Cooper she falls in love with. Of course, they have to read it and discover it's basically a steamy PG-rated time travel romance fantasy about her and Sheldon set on the prairie. And they love it. Or maybe it was the unconscious handsome man with porcelain skin and curious clothing she was about to discover lying in the field. A man who would open her mind to new possibilities 
and her body to new feelings. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.